Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shukumar, Assistant Professor of Physics. In this video session, I will be talking about elementary ideas about multi-stage rocket and then elastic and inelastic collisions with examples. So these topics are a part of the unit conservation of linear momentum which is prescribed for first semester Mysore University students. The important learning objectives of the session are to understand the basic ideas about the multi-stage rocket and then to understand elastic and inelastic collisions. In general, a multi-stage rocket is a combination of many single-stage rockets. Uh, they are either joined consecutively, that is one after the other, or one inside the other. In a single-stage rocket, what we have discussed in the previous video, the final velocity achieved by the rocket after complete burning out of the fuel may not be sufficient to overcome the gravitational field. So therefore, for any successful mission to be carried out, it requires uh, many stages. So therefore, to achieve that final velocities, higher final velocities, which are required to overcome the gravitational field, a multi-stage rocket containing two or more stages is required. Now, for any multi-stage rocket, at the end of first stage, the rocket attains a certain maximum velocity. So, what we have, just like what we have discussed in the previous video in case of a single stage rocket. So, this velocity acts as the initial velocity for the second stage. And also, once the first, uh, once the burning of fuel in the first stage gets over, whatever the container which holds the fuel during the first stage will be discarded so that the weight of the rocket also decreases thereby the velocity is going to increase so once the first stage fuel is burnt out then the second stage will start and whatever the maximum velocity attained during the first stage that acts as the initial velocity for the second stage of the rocket once the fuel in the second stage is burnt up it gets detached and the third stage takes over and the process goes on so thus the velocity goes on increasing at the each stage of the rocket so this represents a picture uh, of a multi-stage rocket uh, this one is actually saturn 5 launch vehicle used by nasa between 1969 and 1973 which has carried out many moon missions so here it is actually a three stage rocket first stage second stage and the third stage and some numbers are given to that so this is an example of a multi-stage rocket so in a multi-stage rocket suppose if u is the final velocity acquired by the rocket at the end of burning of fuel in the first stage then the velocity at any instant during burning of the fuel in the second stage of the rocket is given by v is equal to u the final velocity attained during the first stage plus v naught into log base e m divided by m minus alpha t where m is mass of the rocket at the beginning of burning of the fuel in the second stage and t is measured from the instant the second stage starts burning and v naught is the exhaust velocity of gases during the second stage of the rocket. So now moving on to the next concept uh, in the session, elastic and inelastic collisions. In general, we know that when two particles collide, a large force acts on each other within a short interval of time. A large force come into picture within very short span of time and then the motion of particles change abruptly. So both the particles, uh, motion of both the particles may change or at least one of the particle may change abruptly. And the momentum of the particles is conserved. For any collision for that matter, whether it is elastic or inelastic collision, the linear momentum of this, all the particles together in that system will remain conserved. And essentially, this collision is a redistribution of the total momentum of the particles. There may be exchange of momentum between the particles. 
or one uh, one particle is going to transfer a part of its moment to the other particle like that so in general it can be taken as a redistribution of total momentum of the particles in the system so to talk about elastic collision a collision between two particle a particles is said to be elastic if the total kinetic energy is conserved in an elastic collision uh, linear momentum is conserved whether it is elastic or inelastic the linear momentum remain conserved suppose if m1 and m2 are masses of two particles u1 u2 are their initial velocities and if v1 v2 are their final velocities that is velocities after the collision then according to law of conservation of momentum m1 u1 plus m2 u2 the total initial momentum equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 which is the total final momentum and in an elastic collision as the definition suggests the kinetic energy is also conserved so therefore half m1 u1 square the kinetic energy initial kinetic energy of the first particle half m2 u2 square the initial kinetic energy of the second particle the sum of these two is equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square so where the first term on the right hand side indicates the final kinetic energy of the first particle and the second term indicates uh, the final kinetic energy of the second particle so therefore if we calculate the total initial kinetic energy and total final kinetic energy both are same so this is what the elastic collisions during the elastic collision this is what happens so to look at few examples when a ball on a billiard table hits another ball where the surfaces are uh, very smooth even the billiard table surface is very smooth and also balls are highly polished so therefore uh, this collision can be considered as an elastic collision and then when you drop a ball so a highly polished ball is dropped on a highly polished surface the energy lost during uh, that collision between the ground and the ball will be very less therefore in that case the ball is going to bounce back to our hand again so this can also be taken as an example of elastic collision and then coming to the inelastic collision a collision between two particles is said to be inelastic if the total kinetic energy is not conserved whether it is elastic or elastic as we know linear momentum is conserved therefore m1 u1 plus m2 u2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 and then uh, in case of inelastic collision as the kinetic energy is not conserved so the total initial kinetic energy that is half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square will not be equal to the final kinetic energy which is equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square where m1 m2 are masses of two particles u1 u2 are the initial velocity of the two particles v1 v2 are the final velocities of the two particles so initial means before collision final means after collision so to look at few examples the ball is dropped from a certain height and it is unable to rise to its original height so what happens during this is case this case is the total momentum may be conserved uh, but the total kinetic energy will not be conserved so the particle or the ball will not come back to the hand and again uh, when the accident happens between two vehicles so the collision between those two particles or accident between the two particles can also be taken as an example of inelastic collision so now to talk about the perfectly elastic collision and what is most important thing is no collision is perfectly elastic as there is always loss of energy against dissipative forces whenever collision happens between two particles always some kind of dissipative forces or the uh, frictional forces come into picture as a result of which the kinetic energy or the total energy will be lost in the form of heat sound and light so a perfectly elastic collision is a one in which very little or no kinetic energy has been lost the two objects with highly polished surface when collide very little amount of energy is lost during such collisions therefore that can be taken as a near approximation of a perfectly elastic collision so therefore the above case can be considered as a near approximation of a perfectly elastic collision in coming to perfectly inelastic collision 
a perfectly inelastic collision is open in which the maximum amount of kinetic energy is lost during the collision. During a perfectly inelastic collision, the two particles generally stick together after the collision. For example, a wet clay when thrown against a wall or else a ball is caught by a fielder or a rugby ball caught by a player. All these are examples of the perfectly inelastic collision. So what we can understand from this is no collision is perfectly elastic. So any collision for that matter during collision a little amount of energy will be lost in overcoming the dissipative forces. So therefore uh, if we consider uh, two spheres with highly polished surface when they collide with each other a little a very little amount of energy will be lost therefore the collision between such particles or such objects can be considered as near approximation of a perfectly elastic collision a perfectly inelastic collision means almost all the energy will be lost due to dissipative forces so i hope you have understood both the concept that is the concept of multi-stage racket and then elastic and inelastic collisions. Thank you.